This is Hot Topics. I'm your host, L.R. Bird. Our guest is Dr. Khalib Abdul Muhammad. 2941070 is the number. We're on Hot Topics, WHYZ. If you're listening to us, you got the right one, baby. Let's go back to the lines. You're on the air. Talk to me. Yes, my question is coming from a historical perspective. I would like to know the brother's um, ideas on the Civil War and how that affected the Civil War. Okay. Um, and how that affected the Cataclysm. Yes, that um, happened in the course of history that caused a lot of things that manifest in our world today. You know, caller, I'm I, I'm real. I try to be not define cla- define cataclysm for me. Just yes, a cataclysm is a any sudden or violent physical action that produces changes in the earth surface. If you remember taking physical science... I, okay, I, I, now we got it, but now, you, how do you relate that? Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Okay, what I mean by cataclysm, yeah. that during the course of our whole Earth history, that certain cataclysms occurred, and they caused, my, caused the migration of people... You mean the parting of the continent? Um, if you want to say the fertile question, which would include um, what we call the Middle East now, the continent of Africa, Eurasia, North America, South America. At one time, it was one last mass that was called Pangea. And with certain cataclysms that occurred that would cause changes in the Earth's atmosphere or physical changes on the ground, you would cause, it would cause certain groups to migrate. And in my reading, um, one group that migrated is the white race or the Caucasian race, which migrated down to the last excuse me, Bilal and Sudan, which was located in the Fertile Crescent in Africa. And during those cataclysms, you know that our people in Africa were hurt tremendously as well as other people. But that the other people that lived in other um, areas of the Earth's surface, which lived under conditions where it was icy and cold and frigid, where, um, you know, their mentality was just a little bit more beast-like because of the conditions of where they lived. And when they migrated and came among people living in a fertile crescent who were educated, um, very intelligent, mild-mannered, peaceful, that when they came down with a beast-like mentality that those are some of the things that manifest why those groups were able to conquer our groups and at the same time learn, that, learn our history, learn everything, uh, within the practice of life, within those types of communities, and then control, take over, and just as, you know, all the things that we see today. But my question is really centered to the brother, and if, if his study or his lifetime study, has he come across some of the same types of theory, and again, um, where he has recorded the, um, the history beginning. My sister, I am very pleased to get your question also, and I hope that you will be out with us tonight. Very definitely, there is much truth to what you have said, and it is, of course, verified by the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Of course, I have read Dr. Ivan Van Sertema's works, and of course, I have read the white writer's works, uh, Michael Bradley, who wrote the book, Iceman Inheritance. And in reading Michael Bradley's Iceman Inheritance, and in reading Dr. Ivan Van Sertema, and uh, Dr. Yusuf Ben Yakinen, the black man of the Nile, and his family, and reading other works, we were uh, Dr. Chancellor Williams, The Destruction of Black Civilization, uh, Professor George G.M. James, Stolen Legacy, and many, many others. Uh, we find clues to substantiate or verify what you are saying. However, I think we must be very careful in believing that the white man migrated and in his migration to colder, icy climates, that this altered or changed his nature. I must say to you, my sister, the white man is the same, is the same today as he was yesterday and as the Bible says, and he changes not. And as the scripture says, can a leopard change his spots? And of course the answer is emphatically no. It was not a cold climate that made the white man beastly. It was not a cold climate that made him violent. It was not this cold climate that made him cold. If we want to use a cold climate and say that because of the ice and the cold in Europe, 
This made the white man have to scramble to survive, and this made him more ruthless and devious then what about the black man and woman who lived in what is called the torrid zone, where the equator, the imaginary line, runs through the center of the earth, and where the sun's rays at 14,072 degrees Fahrenheit strikes the earth, causing it to spin at the terrific speed of 1,037 and a third miles per hour on its own axis every 23 hours, 56 minutes and 46 seconds. If that is the hottest place in the world, and that is where we live, then that means that those who live in a hot climate should have had to sc a scuffle and scramble and should have been made ruthless trying to find shade and cool areas if those who lived in the cold climate had to scuffle and be ruthless in order to find warm areas. But you do not find that conduct. You do not find that mentality. You do not find that behavioral pattern among black people as you do among whites who come from the cold climate. If you will come out tonight, my sister, we from the great and illuminating book of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad message to the black man, page, starting on page 103, we will go after this a lot deeper. But there's no question about it. If we take scissors and cut South America out and cut Africa out, we can fit them together like puzzle pieces. That area that's called the Middle East today, there's no such place as the Middle East. Uh, the Middle East is nothing but Northeast Africa, as it is called today, separated by the mainland of Africa by a man-made ditch called the Suez Canal, but at one time all of that was one land mass. No Middle East, and there's no Middle West, no Middle North, no Middle South, and if we go for any of that, we should ask them, where's the Middle Middle? 2941070, Dr. Khalid Abdul Muhammad is with us today. You're on the air. Talk to me. Yes, I have a question, and I think I know what the answer is, but I, I kind of want him to um, emphasize a little bit more for the fact that a lot of people misunderstand their, their religion. I would like to know, do you perceive Jesus as the Son of God, or do you just perceive him as a prophet or a person that just walked the earth? And when you talk about God, are you making reference to your God, Allah? Or are you talking about um, the Christ? I, you know, I just I would like for him to explain briefly a little bit about how they perceive that. Um, okay, he's gonna uh, he's covered a little of that, but we'll we'll go at it. Thank you for your call. Christ, my sister, means the anointed one who comes to crystallize the people into oneness with God, the crusher of the rule of the wicked. We believe in. God in the person of a man who came to dwell among men and women here on this earth. God manifest in the flesh and under the name Christ. When we say Allah, sister, that's just another language. There's no reason for us to get hung up on the name Allah or Jehovah or this name or that name. What is the meaning is what we should be after. Allah means all in all. When you say Allah, you mean the Christ. When you say Allah, you mean Jehovah, you mean Yahweh, you mean Elohim, you mean Jah. When you say Allah, you mean Unkulunkulu, you mean Amin, Aten, Amin Ra, Osa, Oset, Yemen, Ya, Oshun, you mean all of these names. We don't need to get hung up on the land or the label or the language. We want to know what is the translation, what is the root meaning. Does it mean the same thing from language to language? Are we talking about the same one God? That is the true question, I believe, that we are confronted with. And the answer is simply yes, there is, my sister, but one God. You say potato, I say potato. You say tomato, I say tomato. But we're all talking about the same thing. 2941070, you're on the air. Talk to me. Hello. Talk to me. Yeah, I'm, I've been hearing the conversation of the topic you've been saying. It's very interesting, man. Well, that's all we have on the show, interesting guests. What are you suggesting? Talk yeah, into your phone and let me hear your question. Uh, your program be on the air more often so that uh, a lot of blacks here will learn more about the culture and where they come from, you know. It's unfortunate most of them don't know the culture and uh, it's really interesting to see black men or black women understand their culture, you know. Let me ask you a question, can I? Yeah. Are you coming to the Brotherhood reception Wednesday? Yeah. Thank you. Now, do you have a question for our guest? 
Yeah, I have a question for that. Let me ask him a tough one, because he, 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 he thinks he's smart as me. This man's cocky and ready. I like that. <laughs> Brother sits back like, hey, I got it. I like that. Let's talk. Ask him a question. Yeah, the question uh, is, you going to stress on the unity of the African man, uh, black man in this place, this country? He's going to talk about Jesus, the black man, past and present. And you can hear from his conversation, he's just about equipped to handle all of that. but. Uh, are you tonight at seven o'clock at the Nickel Town Recreation Center? It's on one twelve Rebecca Street. He'll, you'll get to hear more of that. So why don't you check him out tonight, okay? Okay, I'll, I'll check him out. I'll do that. Okay? I appreciate all the conversation. We will speak on the unity of the black man and woman here, brother, and the unity of the black man and woman on the African continent. Make sure that you make it out tonight. Listen, thank you for that call, Colin. Now let me come and defend, because I got some of my white listeners out there. They're just shaking. You've been talking about my well, They should call in. And you're just talking about, wait a minute. First of all, why do you insist, and it sounds to me like there's an undertone here, of anti-white? I mean, are you suggesting that there are no white people that are of any value? Well, I'm sure that there must be some white people with some value. The question is, does the good outweigh the bad? And I believe that history will record that wherever we have found the white man, no matter what religious, political, social, or economic system it is, I've been all over the world, Brother L.R. I've been to communist countries. And wherever the black-white dynamic existed, I saw the white communists on top and the black communists on the bottom. I've been to capitalist countries, and wherever the black-white dynamic again existed, I've seen the white capitalists on top and the black capitalists on the bottom. Well, let's go into just, that. A, just a quickly. I've gone to socialist countries. I've seen the white socialists on top, the black socialists on the bottom. Christian countries. The white Christian is on top, the black Christian is on the bottom. Muslim countries. The white Muslim is on top, the black Muslim is on the bottom. Jewish countries. The white Jew is on top, the black Jew is on the bottom. There seems to be in the nature of the white man that no matter what the system is, the white man will rule through a reign of domination and control and normally repression and oppression okay, accompany. Now, now, Doctor, if I were to come back for, for, for some of my white friends, I would say, well, wait a minute. Seems to me everywhere you go, uh, they're ruling. Isn't that a divine indication that, I mean, everywhere on this planet that you visit, white people are in control? What does that say? I mean, it doesn't it look like you all are supposed to be the water bearers? Come on, help me with this. If in every instance you visited, the white Muslims on top and the black Muslims on bottom, seems to me the like this Christians is... white Christians on top okay, and the I mean, black Christians on the bottom. I mean, obviously, I mean, white Americans have gotten the mathematical systems down. They have built the pyramids. I mean, I mean, they have... They have constructed all kinds of electronic devices. I mean, it's, it's, it looks like it's a white man's world. How, how can you counter this? What would cause you not to believe that this is, in fact, the way the gods intended it to be? Well, I do believe that it is the way that God intended for it to be. I don't believe that anything could happen without God's either active or permissive will. I believe that white people were to rule for a particular time on our planet as it is written in the scripture that there would be a particular one who would rule and dominate the earth for six days and then second peter 3 and 8 says dearly beloved be not ignorant of this one thing for one day with the lord equals a thousand years and a thousand years equals one day so six thousand years the white man was given to rule and dominate the darker people of our planet Another scripture says, let no man deceive you, for that day shall not come unless there be a separation or a falling away first, and the man of sin will be revealed, which means that his identity would have been hidden for a period of time. The son of hell or perdition, that one who sitteth in the temple of God, the earth, showing himself that he is the God, but deceiving all of the nations. The scripture says that he would even deceive the very elect of God. And like a dragon, he would take his tail and sweep up a third of even the stars of heaven. But my brother L.R., we believe that once you have gone to the bottomless pit of hell, then you can greater appreciate the higher heights of heaven. 
The scripture says God would choose the most despised and rejected people and he would make them his people. He would take the last, and you know ain't nobody behind us. He would take the last and make them first. And he would take the first, the people that you just mentioned who did not build the pyramids, but he would take the first and make them last. And he would take every valley and exalt the valley and he would bring the mountains down. Exodus 21 and 16 says, He that stealeth a man and selleth that man, and if he be caught with that man in his hands, he shall surely be put to death. Another scripture says, He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Another scripture says, As thou hast done, so shall it be done unto you. Another scripture says, As you have delighted in taking our blood, you will be given your own blood to drink like water. And Jesus said they would be judged for the blood of the prophets, for they had been the murderers, white people, of all of the prophets and saints. They would be judged from Abel all the way to Zechariah. And another scripture said they would be judged all the way up to the second and the third generation and beyond. So the white man is in power by God's permissive will, but not by his active will, but it was only for a particular reason and only for a particular season. And now the six days are up and we are in the Sabbath day of the Lord, the seventh day. And now we must witness the advent or the coming of God himself to remove white people from power. That is why there's a European common market now being formed where whites realize that their world is coming down and they're beginning to come together, try to form a United States of Europe and a common currency. That is why Russia and America are trying to come together because God's hand of judgment is stretched out over the world of the white man and he is now going to raise his lowly people up and we will become the stone that the builders rejected, the builders of civilization, as Jesus, we will become the headstone of the corner and the establishment of a new world order unto God here on this earth. So basically you're saying that the prophecies are being fulfilled. Being fulfilled as uh, we see. And it's unstoppable. Anymore. Cannot reverse it. That was which was last shall be first. There it is. And you thought you said there's nobody behind black folks. Okay. Let's, uh, we're going to try to get in a lot more calls. So one of them is, if you can, I know it's hard to limit that. Uh, we're going to have an expanded edition here of Hot Topics, so we're going to be on another 30 minutes. But we're going to go, and we want to get as many of our callers. Yes, sir. A lot of people have to go back to work. I think we can do that. You're on the air. Talk to me. Talk to me. Yes, this is the C01 guys. I want to say assalamu alaikum to Brother Collins. Wa alaikum salam, my sister. And want to thank uh, those in the Hot Topics uh, family for expressing their condolences for my father's having passed. And to announce that in solidarity with raising the consciousness of the black community in Greenville, the Laundrette Community Speak Out will be meeting with the Nation of Islam this evening to hear Brother Collett as opposed to its regular Monday night meeting at the Laundrette. Okay. I would Four ask percent. Brother Collett um, to speak to the reassignment of 350, 354 counterintelligence FBI agents being assigned to 39 cities in the black community, uh, 39 cities across the country, we know that that's going to be the black community, um, three of which to be assigned to the state of South Carolina, joining with DEA, the drug, so-called Drug Enforcement Administration, and the so-called Alcohol um, fire, uh, and Firearms Agents um, in what I term a public, uh, public uh, phase of COINTELPRO and why the black community ought to be con very concerned about this. Okay. Do you understand that question? Very definitely. Yeah, okay. I understand the question. Thank you for your call. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, my sister. Very definitely the counterintelligence program of the United, Snake, the United States government is being launched against black people. The denial objective of the United States government is the unity of the black nation. The denial objective of the United States government, as J. Edgar Hoover said in the files made available through the Freedom of Information Act called COINTELPRO, in those files J. Edgar Hoover said, and he has laid the foundation for this all the way back as early as his attack on the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey and then all the way on up to his attack on the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and now his predecessors moving against the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and as they also moved on Al-Hajj Malik 
El Shabazz Minister Malcolm X to separate him from his teacher. Operation Dirty Tricks and other uh, code name squads that were a uh, terrorist task force squads that were set up. And now as you have mentioned, DEA and other guises uh, for this national program have been established and are now being launched in the black community. What they are doing, my sister, as you seem to be right on top of it, what they are doing now is creating in the news and creating an America's Most Wanted and other programs. They're creating an image of the black young black male being a terror and a terrorist inside of America and being one that they must focus everything that they have on. The movies that are coming out now. We must talk to those who are making the movies today, even our black writers. If we're going to make movies, they must be movies that will move and motivate a movement and not movies that reinforce the image that the enemy wants out there. So they're creating a, a mandate. They're creating a climate they're of hysteria among, white pe hysteria among white people that will justify. They say drugs have gotten out of hand. Crime has gotten out of hand. We've got to arm the police to the teeth because they are outmanned and outgunned on the streets. All of these things are being used. The shifting of the agents, as we know these agents will now put on white shirts and bow ties and suits and will get close cut haircuts and they'll be saying assalamu alaikum to tonight. We know they'll put on long dresses and galays and they'll put on lapas and grand boobas and they'll be saying alafia and abadigani and hotep and they will be joining the NAACP again, the Urban League, the Nation of Islam, the All-African People's Revolutionary Party, the New African People's Freedom Party, US Organization, Kawaita. They'll be joining us all over again. Blacks will join us and put on the uniform of that particular ideology, philosophy, and program that is working for the legitimate aspirations of our people. Please come out tonight, and I will try to go much deeper into that. All right, uh, we're going to have to take care of just a little business. For those of you who are listening with us, this is Hot Topics. I'm your host, L.R. Bird. We have with us as our guest, Dr. Khalib Abdul Muhammad, who is the national assistant to the Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam. He's going to be appearing tonight uh, at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6 at the Nickeltown Recreation Center, Community Center. That's on Rebecca Street. There is no admission. There is no admission. Uh, only thing it's going to cost you is some time. You need to be ready brain-wise when you go there. I tell you, we say Hot Topics is a chest as chicken. I'm going to take make sure that some of our guests get a chance to go by there. But for those of you who know, chest as chicken has, the, if, you, if you're tired of that other greasy stuff, and you should be because it's killing you, and if you're tired of that chicken that's just living off the name because it doesn't taste anything like it used to, then you need to slide on by Chester's Chicken. It's located at 3214 1A Augusta Road. You're going to be pleased with the place. You're going to like the new owners. And you're going to find out that they've got hot and spicy wings, marinated special chicken, potato wedges, and homemade desserts. They open every day from 11 until 9. And on Saturdays, they stay open to 10 because they know some of us like to hang out late. Chester's Chicken is the best chicken you'll ever go back for. And as I told you before, this is not a commercial. It's an endorsement because I, I don't do commercials. I see you, Chester's Chicken. We're the heart of the <laughs> We have as our guest on this extended version of Hot Topics, Dr. Khalib Abdul Muhammad. He is a national assistant to Minister Louis Farrakhan. He's here with us in Greenville today. He's going to be the guest speaker tonight at the Nickeltown Recreation Center at 7 o'clock. Doors open at 6. For those of you who've never attended a function of this nature before, you need to be there on time because you'll not go busting in at 7.15 very comfortably. 